Welcome to a new video on my home automation open have a node red series. Today I'm going to talk about RF link, which is a gateway device between let's say a home automation system or in my case node web and devices that send signals in the 433 megahertz RF range. The reason I want to talk about this device because you probably have an RF uh, 433 device at home, just like I did, but I just didn't know about it. 433 megahertz is quite a common communication uh, frequency, uh, especially different weather sensors, weather stations, uh, these radio uh, RF temperature and humidity sensors, and also RF doorbells. And actually I have uh, all of these. So I have a couple of weather stations, well, two weather stations, and I also have a doorbell. Uh, at my gate where I don't have uh, uh, normal electricity so I can only have these battery operated RF doorbells and I wanted to receive the data from these devices and there are a few options available so I have seen a project where you buy a 433 megahertz receiver you wire it up with an ASP8266 and you can get a sketch which converts these uh, signals to MQTT messages but the reason I selected this RF link product because uh, I read about this on Peter Scargill's blog. He was quite satisfied with this product and I could see that there is a decent community behind it and the firmware which is uh, parsing or understanding these messages are, are constantly being updated. So probably not the cheapest option on the market but you only need to buy one device so I think it was still a really good price and as you can see on this uh, small picture now the RF link itself is this uh, green board which plugs into an Arduino Mega so that's the blue one here and um, when you buy this board you get the green board as well I paid for this green board as a kit so you need to solder this together and then you uh, plug this into an Arduino Mega I just have happened to have an Arduino Mega and I was buying it uh, from eBay so it's not the not the genuine one and the RF link provides the the code which is running on the Arduino Mega so that does all the parsing of the RF data and probably from this database it's able to identify what device is sending this information and then one this all these converted data is being fed through uh, on the on the output uh, through the serial output so i just uh, took a usb cable and i hooked it up to my raspberry pi and this is how i'm reading the data in node-red via the serial port if you head into the rflink.nl site you can read all the different news about this project and if you uh, click on supported devices and you start scrolling down you can see all the different devices that they support so these are like temperature and humidity sensors and switches and dimmers and uh, weather stations and all sorts of security devices motion sensors and for most of them there is usually something on the top which says that you know most of the cheap Chinese detectors so things that you see on Aliexpress and if they operate on 433 megahertz most probably they would you know this device would be able to receive and and you know get the information of uh, those devices I ordered mine from the nodo-shop.nl and when you load this um, site then you see that um, they have quite a few different kits uh, for uh, for this RF link gateway and I bought the 433 version and if you click then then you can see that there is uh, two more variants so my devices are on the 433 uh, 920 megahertz and even here you have a couple of different options so you can just buy the receiver or you can buy the kit with an Arduino Mega and the antenna I actually bought this one which is just a kit so that's the 20 euro 95 and um, in the accessories I also selected the antenna for that and this antenna has a magnetic mount so it's easy to mount but you can also buy boxy uh, sorry uh, enclosures or if you don't like soldering you can buy this solder service as well the when the product is received actually it comes uh, in a kit form just like this so you have the actual receiver and a couple of uh, pin headers and the antenna uh, connector that's all the things that you need to solder it together so it's probably took like 15 minutes you can't really go wrong with that but you need a fine tip soldering iron and once assembled it looks something like this and it just plugs onto the end of the Arduino Mega 
But um, that's enough about the hardware. Let's uh, let's look at what I did on Node-RED. So I Node-RED, I created this whole new flow, which is basically receiving the data from the RF link device over serial port. It is parsing this data and then based on you know what device is sending the data, it is uh, um, sending out to different um, nodes which are responsible, well, mainly responsible for displaying this information. Um, I have four devices that um, I'm using at the moment. So I have an old, probably 10 year old Maplin uh, battle station. The spinning thing on the top which measures the wind speed is, is broken for a couple of years. So I'm not getting any wind speed or wind gust measurement, but the rain gauge is still working. I also have two weather stations or weather sensors that I got from Banggood recently and these are these Daiju, Diju, whatever is pronounced uh, products. So I have a weather station which comes with an external sensor and I also bought a separate uh, temperature and humidity sensor and I also have those that doorbell which I was talking about. In my flow I'm mostly just displaying the data from these sensors and I also have this separate uh, list here where I list anything which is not coming from any of my sensors. So we will see a little bit later on how I do that. To start working with the RF link, you first need a an RF link in, sorry, the serial in node, which is connected to your um, serial port. Well, in my case, it's the USB port, and it's um, using this communication setting, so 56, 57, 600, uh, board rate, uh, 8 data bits, uh, no parity, one stop bits. I left all the other settings on default. And once you have this connected and the Arduino Omega connected, you start receiving the messages. And the messages are coming in this string format. And if I open a notepad and I put this information in, so just copy paste, um, then you can see that um, all of these messages have these two word. Um, values in the beginning. Uh, these might be, could be IDs or counters. I'm not really sure. I'm not using them. Um, after that, we have a text value, um, which is probably the, well, some sort of ID or uh, product name of the actual device. By the way, as you can see, everything is separated by semicolon. Then we have an ID. And then after the ID, we will get um, key value pairs of uh, measurements that are specific for this device. So this is my mapping weather station. So I have temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind gust, rain gauge, and, and the battery indicator. This is something else. It only has temperature, humidity, and battery. And if I go further, I can see some other examples or the doorbell would have a, like a switch key, which has a value of one when the doorbell is pressed. So the first thing I'm doing here is uh, in I'm converting this text format into an object format and this is all done in this function node uh, so here I split the messages by or split the text by semicolon and I start to separate different parts out so I have the p1 the p2 so the, the, those first two words and then the name and then everything after that goes into like a key value pair and and all this information is tucked into another object which is called uh, msg433 and if you look at the output now, we can see that in, within the object, so this is coming from this uh, debug node, in the message object we have an MSG433 and within that we have P1, P2, the name, the ID and the temperature. So at the moment everything is in string format. And uh, the message from here goes through these uh, function nodes, uh, which each of them are re uh, responsible for converting one of these uh, properties from the from the string value to an actual text value, and that's where the the format comes into the picture. So uh, this is something again I learned from uh, Pete's blog because he has a piece of code here, and um, you know just by looking at the message, you can see that most of the stuff is is in hex with a few exceptions. So for example the the ID is, is, is comes in hex because sometimes you can see it's A, B, C, there's these. So I just, um, each of these function nodes are pretty much the same. So first I check whether the message has the, uh, the, par, uh, the particular parameter or a particular attribute. And if, I, if, if it has, then I just convert it. So I'm mostly using the parsint 
and uh, because the ID is hex, I'm using you know parsing and comma 16 to convert the hex text value to a integer value. The humidity is probably the only one which is coming in decimals, so I just convert basically the text to a number. And the temperature is is again coming in hex in 0.1 degrees centigrade uh, precision. So you convert using parsing and then you divide it by 10. And because we can have negative temperatures, the negative temperatures are indicated by the most significant bit being one. So if this value, if the hex value is uh, greater than 8000, then it's a negative temperature. So I need to times it by minus one at the end. So you just daisy chain these uh, function nodes together. The rain is the same and you know wind speed is the same. And what do I have at the end? I have something like a switch and a chime, which is uh, only has zero values of zero one and it's coming from my doorbell. So once the message has gone through each of these converters, you we see something like this, where instead of seeing hex values, we see the actual values. So ID is one, one, uh, 111, the temperature is 10.1. If I look at another one, which probably has a little bit more stuff, well, okay, so that's different ID, and then, okay, then we have a battery. So battery is still string, so it's uh, nothing like that. So, okay, so temperature, humidity, wind speed, and the rain. Now that this data is converted, we can check which device it is coming from. So what I do next is I uh, put these messages through this big switch box, or switch node, and uh, what I decided to do is to look at the ID to identify which device the message is coming from. And I do understand that this is this might not be the best solution because uh, I also read in forums that some devices tend to switch IDs uh, when the battery is changed, but um, so far this is the best option I could come up with and this is working fairly, fairly well. I can see that uh, um, my Maple weather station has been sending the same codes uh, in the last month uh, for the DJU weather sensor, I think it did change the, the ID. You might be able to use the name uh, as well. So uh, it's really up to you. So in the switch node, I said, okay, I want to filter on message.message433.id. And if these are the IDs that the message being directed or sent to the various ports. And if it's not being picked up by any of these ifs, then basically it goes to the last one, which is the otherwise there's are the unhandled messages. So basically anything which comes from my neighbors. So after the switch order, I'm not really doing anything uh, fancy. So most of the stuff is just ending up in the in the dashboard at the moment. So I'm sending these to various uh, UI nodes where I just say that please, you know, display message dot message three three sorry four three three dot name or for the humidity message dot message four three three dot hum for humidity. And that's, this is how I get these values. So I get these updated all the time. And because these are being RF ones, I also wanted to see what was the last time as a timestamp when I got the message from this device and how many seconds has passed since the last update. So these are really, you know, just counting up every second uh, since the last update. And um, I found that my weather stations usually send messages every minute. So this would probably reset at any point yeah it just did now and of course uh for stuff like a road uh, sorry a doorbell um uh, the the postman was around that was seven hours 20 minutes ago and i'm doing all these statistics with this single function node and you don't if you if you plan to use the same functionality you don't even need to change any of the code here because it's all self-sustained um, all you need to do is redirect your RF message into this node and also create this uh, inject node which is uh, firing every single second and it has to have this topic update and um, this is how this function node knows whether it's getting this one second update message which is then forcing this uh, one to update or whether it's getting the real RF message, uh, which case it needs to send the timestamp that the message was received at. 
and also it has two outputs on the first output it is updating the last update uh, the timestamp and on the second output it is uh, constantly updating the the number of seconds elapsed and also i am routing the second output through the system diagnostics function node which is linking this rf module functionality with my system diagnostics framework which i have a separate video on and uh, and here all i'm doing is um, i'm keep, keeping track of all my different devices so i have created these um, devices as separate systems so i can see whether they are online or they have they are offline or they are low on battery and this status is being decided sorry not here but here in this function node again that code is is uh, fairly self-sustained except these uh, variables on the top but all the, uh, the the code here are the same for uh, all of them and that basically just says that if I received an update in the last 10 seconds, then the device is online. If the battery is low, then the status needs to change to the status 60, which is the low battery status uh, in my setup. If the status is okay, that, sorry, if the battery is okay, then it's normal status one, which is online. And if I haven't received messages uh, for more than 10 minutes, then I consider this, uh, that system being offline, so it's no longer transmitting. And as you can see, that's my first RF mod, uh, device. This is my second RF device. And this is my third RF device. And, and the last one is actually the doorbell, so I'm not monitoring whether that's online or offline because that's not sending regular updates. All I'm doing is whenever a message is received, I'm sending um, a message to my Google Home, so it announces that so there is somebody at the door. And I'm also sending two messages out uh, for my Telegram because I have integrated Node-RED with Telegram, so I get a message in my Telegram Messenger that somebody's at the door. And uh, this second link is um instructing my my ip camera flow to grab a, a frame from my ip camera which is looking at the gate and that also gets sent to my telegram messenger messenger uh, so i'm not only getting a text that somebody has a door but i also getting a picture of the gate itself so i can see whether it's the postman or you know parcel delivery or something else that actually quite useful. So this is this was my initial intention to use this RF link for, and it's been working flawlessly. And it just, I mean, I think that it's actually really, you know, good help. So I know if the postman was around, then I need to go to the post office to pick up a package. And as I said, um, anything which comes out on the last node is going to this new device function, which again just collects all the different commands in the. Um, in, a con in, in its context and um, the way it does it that let me just go back RF link, um, that it keeps track of all the IDs so if, if I get an, another message from this ID then instead of creating that again here as a new line it, the, uh, the line for that ID is just getting updated so um, you can see that I'm getting all these different messages from these temperature sensors which must be at my neighbor's place and looking at the values they must be outside because the, the temperature readings are quite low so that's the piece of the of the code where which allows you to spy on your neighbors and then you know see what sort of RF devices that they are using all I have talked about so far is how to use RF link to receive information how to parse that information and how to well understand what is uh, what is being sent but this module is also capable of sending RF signals so let's say you have these RF uh, remote wall sockets um, besides the remote that comes with it you should be able to control them with this device as well so I don't have any of those devices yet and I haven't looked into sending signals out so that's definitely going to be something that I will be doing in the future and most probably covering in an upcoming video as always if you are interested in this particular flow you will find the link in the video description I hope this video was useful thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video